and welcome to Blytheway Business News. Today we're joined by Dan Betts, Chief Executive of Hummingbird Resources. Hummingbird is listed on the AIM market in London with a ticker of HUM and a market cap of around £77 million. Dan's a regular on the show, but we're also from Hummingbird welcoming a debutante, uh, the Chief Geologist of Hummingbird, uh, Murray Patterson. Murray, welcome to Blytheway Business News. But let me start with Dan. Dan, last week you had an update on the Doobie Gold project in Liberia, uh, drilling results uh, which you've completed uh, with which have been completed by your partner Pasifino. Um, so I want an update on that project, please, and, and a little bit of a yeah you know, state of the nation where we are with the exploration plans in general. Dan, for those less familiar with Doobie and Doobie Gold in Liberia. Quick bit of background, please, on the project and the asset. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thanks for having us on. Um, well, as you know, we we did a joint venture with a company called Pasifino, uh, run by Ian Stalker and Steve Tells, and and their job is to conduct an earning agreement where they have to complete a DFS on the project and do an exploration program that's been um, agreed between us. And I think they've had no news so far, really, because the first few months of this program has been to redo all the infrastructure and the roads and access and camps to the project that, that we did before we um, put the project on care and maintenance a few years ago. So for me, this is a really exciting time. I mean, no holes have been drilled in Liberia for six years. They've redone all that infrastructure. I think since the JV was done, there's been a, a dearth of news and I think the market's probably waiting for something to happen. And this is that moment, you know, the drills are turning. They've got three drill rigs there. Obviously they are the operator of the JV. So in terms of what, what Hummingbird is doing, we're just um, announcing their progress to the market, um, but we're very encouraged to see it motoring ahead. I mean, am I from memory, this is where Hummingbird started in Liberia, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So so we, we found these deposits at Doobie from first principles, um, you know, grassroots exploration, stream sediment sampling, all the way up to a, a multi-million ounce resource. But it was too big for us to take forward, which was why we moved to Yamfalila in Mali. But it is a it's a big resource and, and we think has lots of potential to get much, much bigger. So the key really is is spending money on it and finding a partner who can take that forward in a disciplined way and conducting a DFS on the project is the first step in, in that regard. We, we did economic studies only on half of the resource. So that's obviously um, a lot of opportunity for them. What was it about Pasifino that made you choose them as your partner? The team. I mean, I think they've got a track record of taking projects forward and, and showcasing um, projects for what they can be. And also, I think they have um, a good track record of, uh, you know, commercially in the market, getting value for, pro for projects. So I think um, I think they had all the attributes needed to take the project forward. Murray, let, let me let me come to you now. Um, Pasifino are completing a defined exploration program. Can you talk us through the highlights uh, of, of the recent release? You know, uh, it's their drilling results, but what's exciting you as you look at them? Yeah, hi, Tim. Um, so about the DBF drilling commenced by Pasifino, this is just the start of the DFS drilling, which is all about um, improving and growing the mineral resource there. Um, and they've started the DBF uh, deposit, which is the smaller of the two. The, the initial drilling they've started with, um, as stated in the release there, they're there to convert the inferred to indicated, which these inferred resources um, are classified from holes too uh, far apart or spaced widely apart. And that's where it's hard to establish grade continuity and the, the infill drilling um, is going to allow these gold grades to geostatistically be correlated, um, which just all, all it means for the everyday um, viewer there is that it'll give a more accurate estimation and, and a value to the, the DBF deposit once this drilling's um, completed. Um, Pasifino, yeah, they've had to start with the harder drilling first, and that is this inferred um, to infill drilling. Um, to classify resources as indicated. And you know, I suppose why that's important um, to the project is that uh, these only indicated and, and measured as well, uh, resources can be converted to mineable reserves. Um, 
if they are contained inside an economic pit uh, at the end. Um, so, which, which inferred resources can't be, and that's um, quite an important distinction to make. Um, but ultimately, this drilling that Pasifino are now doing um, on, on our behalf um, or contributing to the project is the, it's improving the project's uh, economics, um, which is going to make it a much more compelling case. It's going to increase its overall value, which is only a good thing for, for the HUM shareholders. Um, as, as well as the, I suppose the key highlights from the drilling so far, there's only a few holes released, but um, yeah, these first uh, drill intercepts uh, are certainly, they're, um, they're excellent for DBF. And, and the reasons for, for saying this is that DBF has um, unbelievable geological continuity to it, where the main gold bearing zone is, um, it's like a coal deposit. It's, um, it's flat, it's continuous, it's predictable. It's 2.8 kilometers long. Um, it's everything that gold deposits normally aren't. Um, so the widths and grades that have been intersected so far um, uh, are comparable to those also drilled on the same section. And um, to me, it just yeah, reinforces the, uh, the, how low risk uh, this deposit actually is or is going to be when they come to mine it. So the, the big brother deposit Tucson is, is actually right next door and, and drilling yet hasn't commenced there. And, uh, and that's where the real resource growth is, is going to come, uh, come from as well as the, uh, in some more inferred to indicate it. So over the coming months, we're expecting to um, be, be announcing on behalf of Pasifino a, a lot more of these uh, drill results from DBF and uh, Tucson. So Dan, it sounds like Pasifino are making, you know, starting to make some really good progress for you at Doobie in Liberia. Can I take you back to um, another one of your assets? Because you are, uh, you're operating in three countries, but let's go now to Mali, if we may, um, the Yanfalila uh, deposit. You said in your uh, 2021 outlook, uh, you're expecting to have a, a minimal resource estimate uh, on the Mali operations by the end of the first quarter this year. Are we still on track for that? Yes, Tim, we are. Thanks for thanks for putting me on the spot. And it's good to have Murray on the call as well, because he, he's now on the spot as well. But no, we are, we are still on track for that. And um, what that is, is really a summary of uh, last year's exploration program, which was the first time really we've done a full season's exploration since we've been at Yamfalila. And we'll be updating our mineral resource estimates um, by the end of Q1. And that obviously leads into Murray's thinking into the 2021 exploration program, which is already ongoing and how we can further increase those resources. So still on track. In conclusion, can you give viewers some sense, some expectation of what the news flow might look like from this significantly increased uh, exploration budget? Well, I mean, I'll hand over to Murray in a second, but really the reason for the increased exploration budget is the future of Yamfalila lies in uh, extending the resource base to find future mine life. I mean, no, that's the best value investment this company can make. You know, we've paid back the debt, we have a plant, and the company's value is really based largely on a, uh, what's seen as a limited mine life. So the more we can do to extend that mine life, be it through improved confidence in resources that are outside of the current mine plan or underground resources or new new discoveries, um, all of those are gonna add tremendous value to the value of our company. So if that was me putting Dan on the spot, Murray, he's now putting you on the spot. So come on, you're a chief geologist, 10 million pounds, $10 million of expo exploration money. Um, what, are we, what can we expect to come out of that? Yeah, Tim, um, certainly yeah, we've, we've identified a number of key areas again in 2021 uh, that are similar to where we drilled um, in 2020 that gave us actually really good success in, uh, in the resource growth. And we know there's still more opportunity at those um, deposits and I'll just quickly run through them. I mean, Commander East, um, we hadn't closed it off. We're drilling there to the north. We're trying to do what we can to add and improve the economics of the underground planned underground mine there. Uh, we have another deposit called Sunamali East and um, we haven't defined its um, limits of mineralization yet, which it's, it's really been one of those cases of the more you drill, the more you find. And so we've planned 15,000 meters there. Uh, Sunamali West, another deposit up to the north. Um, we're following up on some good high grade zones that we intersected last year. There's another area to the north along strike that we're, we're going to test. 
um, the 6,000 metres plan there. And the second part really to that budget is um, our testing of the greenfields targets. And uh, we started this program on testing the greenfields uh, last year, and we had immediate success at one of the first deposits or targets we drilled at called BBC. So we're going back there to revisit that to close off its, its boundaries and uh, try and understand its resource uh, growth potential there, as well as we, we had identified and we still need to follow up on these six other priority key um, greenfields targets. So yeah, there's there's a lot of opportunity left still to grow the, the resource at um, Yarnfield, which is what we're really pleased about. And that's where the, yeah, the, the focus is for this coming year. And which really also creates a, a yeah, some news flow that um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be sort of issuing to the market once the MRE release is done. Um, there's various now updates on the Kamana East drilling, the Sanamali East and the Greenfields drilling once it starts in about two to three weeks time. So um, yeah, uh, plenty happening and we're looking forward to keeping everyone informed as, as we progress. Thanks, Murray. Thanks, Dan. That was Dan Betts and Murray Patterson from Hummingbird. As, as we often said on this show, um, analysts remark about Hummingbird, these guys don't let the grass grow. They're always busy. So that was the latest update. I'm sure they'll be back to see us again soon. That's it from Blytheway Business News for today. Thanks for watching.